Hi, I'm Shane. Today we're going to discuss the features and benefits of our Model 24 Heavy Duty Rock Saw. The model shown today has a 60 inch diameter wheel which allows for a 24 inch cut depth. The cutting width is 2 and 3 quarter inches. These rock saws are equipped with dual depth control cylinders which allow you to fine tune the depth of cut. There's also a side shift cylinder so that you can offset the cutting wheel to the right side. So I wanted to point out the heavy plate construction that we use for the frame here. We have one inch plate steel that runs a full length from front to back and it's capped on the end that gives you a really strong box shape so you have extra rigidity. This also adds to the, the mass of this unit which is over 3,100 pounds. That mass is what keeps pressure on the concrete on the tip of the tooth while it's cutting. And we're using one inch plate steel here on the skid arms and they're tied together at the front side. These heavy duty rock saws are driven by a radial piston motor which can handle 60 gallons per minute and 4,800 PSI and creates over 6,600 foot-pounds of torque. On the front top here, I want to show you the roller guide arm, which is easily unpinned and rolled down. Uh, this is going to show you on the ground a reference point of where your cut is actually moving towards. So I wanted to show some of the features of the main mounting frame here. You can see that uh, on top and bottom, we have a 3 by 5 inch rectangular tube that runs the full width here. This is going to give you extreme strength and rigidity and the rock saw subframe itself rides on plastic on this edge right here. So that's how we're able to side shift it from the center out to the right side. Additionally, we have two wheels here on the bottom of the frame. These are your contact points when you're actually cutting so that you don't have to support all the weight. The rear of the machine is supported by the wheels while the front is supported by the two skids. Also here we have the side deflector. This is going to uh, push the spoil material off to the side so that you don't have to drive over it with the tracks or wheels of your skid steer loader. On each side of the subframe you'll notice these two long stroke cylinders. They are coupled to the front skid arm and so these are what you will retract while you do your plunge cut. And the reason we have the skids at the front is to better support the weight and to better support the wheel as you do your plunge cut because you don't want to plunge too fast you want to be able to uh, do it under control and keep it stable. This will help uh, for the longevity of the teeth. Also on the left side, we have a depth gauge. This will show you how deep you're actually cutting as you lower yourself into the plunge. So to go over a few of the features about the wheel, uh, the wheel itself is made up of inch and a half thick steel. And one of the reasons we do that, besides the strength, is to get a lot of mass. You need a lot of mass if you're going to have extreme pressure on these teeth. And it, it's that pressure that allows the machine to cut efficiently. There's 72 teeth on the perimeter of this wheel. There's also, you'll notice, some teeth on the sides. These side teeth here are uh, dual purpose. They're going to help keep the wheel kind of um, loose inside the cut itself, keep it moving. It also cleans up the side of the cut. So when you're down into concrete, this is going to help keep the wheel from binding. You'll notice that these teeth have a huge cap of carbide on the tip. That's because they're specifically designed for cutting concrete. They're easily replaceable and they're made to rotate in their holder so that they wear evenly. I wanted to point out one major difference between our rock saw and some of the competition. And that's the fact that we have a greasable support bearing on the opposite side of the motor. Um, there's a lot of rock saws out there that just have a cantilevered uh, load. So they have the wheel bolted to a flange and then they don't have a supporting bearing on this side and what happens if you have that style is the wheel is kind of loose it's too flexible it's not rigid enough to cut um, reliably in the in the concrete so with a support bearing on the opposite side it stiffens up that support structure makes it stiff so that it is runs true and it doesn't flex or vibrate when it's cutting the concrete. Check back as we make more videos just like this. Check out our website or give us a call if you have any questions.